Good morning, everybody. Welcome to B4 Live. I'm Richard Rosser of B4. And this morning, we welcome Philippa Hoy of Oxfordshire Green Tech. Good morning, Philippa. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Richard. Uh, it's great to be working in conjunction with B4 today. Um, welcome to this collaborative uh, Oxfordshire Green Tech B4 webinar. Um, we'll be hearing today from Oxfordshire Green Tech member Two Bird Brand Collective, all about getting your brand strategy and your brand story right and communicating it in the best possible way. So, as Richard mentioned, I'm Philippa. Um, I joined by a regional who run Oxfordshire Green Tech. Uh, very recently. Before that, I was uh, an independent sustainability consultant and I was actually a member of Oxfordshire Green Tech, um, joining them last year at the launch. So it's been great to see how much um, I was very impressed with what they were doing um, beforehand as a member and I'm delighted to now be part of the team taking that forward. Um, Right, okay, I'm going to get some slides on screen now. So hopefully you can all see slides now. That's okay, that's so perfect, yeah. great. Thanks, Richard. Okay, so um, this morning, um, we are. I'm going to give a quick introduction to Oxfordshire Green Tech for those who might not be familiar with it, and then hand over to Laura Chapman and Lisa Rake of Two Bird Brand Collective. Um, we're all in week five of lockdown now, so you'll all be Zoom experts. Um, but just a reminder, if you could please stay muted uh, to, to avoid the background noise. Um, we're going to take questions at the end. Um, but if there is something as we go along that you want to clarify, um, do put a note in the chat box and I'll, I'll pick that up and ask that of Laura and Lisa. But otherwise, it'd be great if you ask your questions in person at the end, uh, unmute yourselves. Uh, but if you're not keen to speak, um, then do just uh, drop me a note in the chat box, uh, put your question in the chat box and I'll pick those up in the Q&A session. Please be aware that we're, we are recording this webinar uh, th th this morning and it'll be up on uh, the B4 and the Green Tech websites for future reference. Um, we will stop promptly before 11 o'clock this morning so that everyone um, has a chance to observe the one minute silence uh, to remember the NHS um, uh, staff that have sadly died during the current pandemic crisis. Okay, so quick introduction to Oxfordshire Green Tech. Um, this is something that uh, Bi Regional has been working with Charwell District Council for the last three years and as I mentioned la launched uh, last year and this is what it's all about. Um, we are trying to stimulate the low carbon economy in Oxfordshire. We're bringing together the people doing great things and, and to help everyone connect so that everyone can do more faster at lower cost. The network is over 100 members uh, now and it's developing into a real ecosystem of organisations, um, not just those that um, the, the sort of businesses that are running the low carbon uh, technology and services, but also those supporting organisations such as estate agents, lawyers, office furniture sellers, architects, everyone who really wants to see the low carbon economy uh, progress and be successful in Oxfordshire and, and further afield. And the way we do this, um, we help our members um, me, uh, get to know new markets and connect with them with new potential customers. We help them find partners so that those solutions for technology and services can be brought forward. And of course, to do that, um, access to funding is absolutely vital and we help signpost to those sources. We can also help organisations improve their own internal uh, sustainability progress and help them on their their journey there and the whole point of this is to do everything faster and at lower cost 
than individual organizations going it alone. So the way we make all this happen is we run events to share knowledge and facilitate networking. Um, not being able to meet face to face hasn't stopped us. We've got um, a great series of webinars and masterclasses just like this one over the next few months. Um, so do have a look at our website and keep an eye on social media for our, our future events. I'll, I'll mention some at the end, um, but we're adding ones all the time. We have uh, special interest groups such as um, looking at uh, electric vehicles and the future of mobility, uh, the circular economy and access to finance. We provide training and practical support uh, and advice to our members and they particularly appreciate the market intelligence that we bring to them regularly from the clean tech uh, world. Now, tricky time for all businesses at the moment and um, we want to really help um, our members through all of this and to do that we're offering um, six months free membership to any SMEs who want to join us at the moment and equally for our um, existing members we're going to extend your renewal date by six months to help try and get everyone over the hump. So do get in touch uh, after uh, this morning's session if you'd like to take up that offer and join Oxfordshire Green Tech. Okay, time to move on to our main speakers this morning. And I'd like to introduce Laura and Lisa from Two Bird Brand Collective. Um, between them, uh, they have over 40 years experience of working with all kinds of brands. And they're really focused on bringing this big brand experience to everyone to help develop incredible brands. So during this session, they're going to try and share some of this vast experience in a, in a really tangible way. And we're going to see how much uh, we're able to do that in, in, in sort of the next half hour, 45 minutes. So good luck with that, girls. And over to you. Thank you. Hi, welcome everybody. Thanks for the introduction. So hope everybody's keeping well today. Um, I'm just going to share my screen, so bear with me a second. Okay, hopefully everybody can, uh, can see my screen. Please, please shout if you can't. Um, okay, welcome, as I say, thanks for, thanks for joining us today. It's nice to see some familiar names on there as well, which I've noticed. So hi to those that already know me. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, how you build uh, an incredible brand. Um, it sounds really simple, but actually uh, uh, it, it's, it, it's not. <laughs> Hence um, the experts coming on board to try and help you look at um, how you can build your incredible brand. Um, so uh, why do we need incredible brands? So we like to reiterate that a brand is literally everything you do and say. Um, it touches all of your customers across all of your touch points. So whether they meet you face to face, whether they meet you online, um, whether they talk to call centers, whether they visit your website, um, your brand is touching them in, in some way. And um, we don't forget also not just your customers, but also your employees, your suppliers, and even investors as well like to see that you have a strong and robust brand. Um, and good brands have clear values that they're brought to life through the design of their product, the experience, and the service um, of the people, um, and even the architecture of, of, um, of buildings. Um, as well as the marketing and the communications. Um, and I just want to touch on sort of building brand equity as well, because when you have a strong brand, you build equity in your brand, which is essentially building equity in your business as a whole. Um, brand equity is a commercial value that comes from consumer perceptions rather than from the product or service itself. So in simple terms, it means that people will think of you before they think of uh, a competitor or another brand and they'll remember your brand and they will trust your brand. 
Okay, so first things first, um, building your brand. Okay, how is it it's different to, it's different to marketing activation? Um, building your brand is a long-term investment. Um, it enables business to thrive over time um, and survive market volatility, such as the crisis that we're in now. Um, we're in these incredible times and this is your chance as a, as a brand to step up um, internally, with your employees and externally and um, conveying your strong brand it will be key right now and obviously um, if you build a, a strong brand over time you will get through these tough times um, there's I won't bore with data right now but there's plenty of evidence to suggest that that brands that, that build themselves up um, with a stronger percentage over marketing activation activation last longer um, that brands that, that focus on short-term um, solutions. Also, brand building increases loyalty. Let's face it, you know, customers, new customers are harder to find. So, um, you know, rather than spending money on trying to find new ones, let's keep the ones that you've got or keep them returning, keep them coming back. Um, so building the brand as opposed to short-term sales activation and tactical marketing is always going to be a winner. Okay, today we're going to show you the foundations for building an incredible brand um, as much as we can in, in, in 30 minutes. So we're going to talk about strategy, um, identity, and if we have time, hopefully we will, we'll talk about brand story, which is, which is how you communicate your brand. Um, so we'll show you an overarching outline and the first steps that you need to take to develop a brand strategy and a story. Um, and I just want to point out that in the interest of time, we haven't included the important um, elements that also go into building a strategy, which is um, research analysis and, and looking at key business objectives, which always come you know, uh, right up front before developing um, your full brand strategy. Okay, so what is the purpose of a brand strategy? So um, we believe that now is a good time to refocus your brand strategy and look at how, how it's being communicated. Um, the obvious reason to having a brand strategy is that it helps distinguish you from your competition and makes you more recognisable to customers, employees um, and suppliers. Your brand strategy also dictates your marketing strategy. Um, it will provide a clear purpose for why and how you're engaging with your customers and other stakeholders and enable you to communicate much more clearly. Um, and then with the communication, it helps with more consistent messaging um, and attract and maintain your customers. Um, and not only does it pro provide that consistency to your customers and build trust, um, it also provides focus for your employees. Uh, a clear brand strategy helps make sure that everyone is working towards the same objectives. So we think that now is a good time to refocus your brand strategy. Um, obviously, after taking care of your teams and your employees and, and suppliers first, uh, you know, we were not saying that you go and start throwing money at things that, that shouldn't come first, employees do come first. but if it's one of these things that you've been putting off for a while, this is a good time to perhaps look at this thinking and strategic space that you might have. Um, and this is a moment when brands can prove that they put their people first, they put their customers first, and they can respond with compassion and really make a difference. So your brand strategy will shape your response to um, COVID-19. Uh, you know, it's reflective of your valuables, for, um, your values. For example, if your value is um, one of your brand values, are you that you're reliable and trustworthy and you sell products that are for delivery, your actions are really going to count now. So, you know, make sure that you communicate, ensure that you aim to be as reliable as possible considering the circumstances um, and reassure customers that they'll have longer return times. Example, you know, these are just sort of small examples of how you communicate some of your brand values. So, how do we do this? Um, okay, so Two Bird, um, our business, as well as other businesses, use um, varying models to create um, 
essentially what is what defines your brand strategy uh, at two bird we use something called the brand cross um, so after we've done our, our key research insights brand audits um, into the market and the competitors and um, we then take these outputs and use this framework called the brand cross there are five key elements which summarize your brand so today we're going to look at them one by one and then put them all together in the form of a brand cross. So we're going to start with positioning. Um, positioning at the moment is probably one of the most important things that any business or brand, any brand can focus on right now. Um, when the market pace changes, such as during the crisis, that's when you need to revisit your positioning and your strategy. Um, explore your market and competitors, what are they doing? How are they looking visually, verbally? What are they saying? What are they doing? Has your positioning changed or has it shifted um, even in recent years? And that means internally as well as externally. Um, consider that now that the global market has um, shifted, your positioning needs to be returned to a new reality. So think about what, what will that look like? What does that look like? So essentially, uh, broadly, position is, is what makes you different. What makes you stand out from the competition? Why would someone, why would someone choose you? Okay. The next um, element we'll look at within the brand cross is purpose. So, Brand purpose is essentially the reason for, for being here beyond making money. Um, you know, think about why your brand exists. Uh, what is your intent to change the world for the better and connect with customers on a more personal level? Um, these statements sound quite bold, but actually it is the reason for being. It's why your brand is here and it's why humans, why people will, will buy from you. It's connecting with them on a more personal level more emotive and also um, the rise of the sort of conscientious consumers or followers means that you need to think about the social environmental ecological and political position of your brand especially during these times um, the next slide is is the element of value so thinking about what values are important to you and think about other brands that you really like. What are their values? Um, do your brand values resonate with your customers and your employees? Um, you know, will your values change during um, COVID-19 or even post COVID-19? They're placed at the very core of your brand and they are there to dictate your brand, mas uh, brand message, your look and your personality. And um, just to note, you'll likely attract customers and employees that share your values as well. So these are really the guiding principles that, that will shape your business. OK, and then we go on to brand promise. So brand promise is um, a value or experience that um, the, cu the customers can expect to receive from you every time they interact with you. Um, the more a, a business can deliver on a promise, the stronger your brand value and then staying at the forefront in the mind of the, your customers, employees. So what promise, think about what promise you will make to your customers and your employees and your suppliers that, that won't be broken. Why do customers choose your business? And think about what they seek from you that they can't get anywhere else. And then we have personality, which is a bit more fun. Um, so this is um, usually defined as a set of human char characteristics that are um, attributed to your brand. So <clears throat> it's, just, it's a personality, something again, that the consumer or your followers can relate to. And you're, it, so we need to think about what does your brand, what, what is it like? How does it behave? Um, is your brand personality and tone of voice still appropriate and consistent and clear? Um, it might have changed over the years. Um, if you haven't looked at your branding for a few years, you know, you might have evolved and 
come up with a different set of values therefore your you know your personality does change and evolve just like we do slightly as people um and how does your brand personally personality react to the the new covid 19 world does it does it act with humor with co compassion or with practical support um okay so in a very very up quick and overarching summary we then end up with our full brand cross so here we have uh, one of our own case studies um, this is an example for one of our clients the brand is a kitchen designer and supplier with a local showroom um, after much uh, research into their, their customers and their audience and their markets we came up with this brand cross um, and you know essentially they pride themselves on being a relatively affordable handmade kitchens they welcome but all types of budgets and have a strong local pressure presence which they wanted to elevate even further and um, they didn't want to come across as too high-end they wanted to encourage customers who might not have otherwise considered a handmade kitchen from a local supplier so um the promise here is that they provide um, practical advice creative inspiration and deliver well-built kitchens that last work into almost any budget uh, their positioning they're the only local showroom to deliver well-designed british made ki kitchens at uh, affordable price points and that's really powerful really strong because um, when we considered the local area it was quite a broad radius as well so it's quite far-reaching um, so they're demyfing the the demyfing the kind of um story that handmade kitchens are only really expensive and for the high-end you know rich people um their purpose uh, making the exceptional achievable and their values they really pride themselves on service service that aren't really are unrivaled in in their in their market dedicated um when speaking with a business owner he was clearly committed to his brand and his service and what he did um and literally was on every project from start to finish um had true dedication to his his work um trustworthy they this brand just you know absolutely eludes trust you know you know that you're going to get um, a great quality um, of work and service through him and also extremely thorough and then in terms of personality um again down to earth friendly attentive approachable authentic so we didn't want to want to come across as sort of too high end and unapproachable so we wanted to make him really friendly make the brand nice and friendly um, and attract those customers that perhaps he hadn't been um, attracting before um, so I won't, we will hand all of this out at the end so um, you'll, you'll see all of these examples um, the next slide I am just going to hand over to Lisa to talk about so over to you Lisa Hello, can everyone hear me? Oh yeah, I am. Um, so I'm Lisa and I'm the creative director. So I tend to look after the, the visual aspect, which is why I'm, I get to talk about this one slide. Um, so what's great about having a, um, a brand cross is that is the blueprint for then going on to design your visual identity. So it's really a really good tool to hand over to your designer of choice or your marketeer of choice, anyone that's delivering any kind of creative work. The, the brand cross is that blueprint. Um, and it's a little shorthand for people like me, designers, to look at and use it to start to visualize and create logos and pick out color palettes and, and choose the fonts, for example, or, or any textures. So the corporate identity really is a is a visualization of the brand cross so it's not just a logo so that's where often a lot of small businesses might get stuck they go straight into designing a logo and it might look nice but it doesn't necessarily feel right and it's quite hard to um, verbalize why that might be and often it's because you haven't done a really good solid piece of brand strategy to back up and rationalize why you're making certain decisions to do with your visual identity and your tone of voice. So the both things work in conjunction and 
if you um, change anything on your brand cross, you then need to just have a quick check-in with your corporate identity to make sure that that's reflected, uh, which is why we always say, you know, you review, the, review your brand cross regularly um, and ideally, you know, update your visual identity every 18 months or so um, to make sure it's fresh. And, and that way you're less likely to have to do a full rebrand every four or five years um, and potentially shock your customers with something completely different. So, so creating a, um, a corporate identity that's um, based obviously on your brand cross, but also informed by competitor and market research is really important for every business. Um, you then have something that you can be used consistently across all your communication channels, visual and written. Uh, if you have a good set of brand guidelines that demonstrate your corporate identity, you can pinpoint that and, and test it against all your communications, make sure that everything's on, on board. Um, and then uh, another thing to think about with your corporate identity is, um, does it differentiate you from your industry or does it sit you safely within your industry? And there are arguments for both and it's always worth thinking about. It depends on your competitors. Sometimes if you've got a very crowded marketplace, it's really good to build a corporate identity that looks completely different to everybody else because you'll stand out. There's a couple of really good examples at the moment. Um, there's a brilliant, uh, life insurance company that have done something very different um, using skeletons and it's, it's quite funny. They've built a whole strategy around being very different and looking completely different. Obviously in certain industries that's not going to work um, and you're better off, particularly if you have less competitors, to sit safely within the, the standards of your, your particular industry. Um, so again, it's, there's no right or wrong there, it's really about deciding what's best for your brand. And if you've built a really good brand cross and you understand your positioning, um, then you'll be able to make a really good um, informed decision on that. So, so you know, we could do a whole uh, presentation on corporate identity, but essentially uh, it is the visual representation of your strategy um, and should just be consistent. So I will hand back to Laura to continue the uh, presentation. Thanks everyone. Hi, apologies. I was just <laughs> trying to get back to present mode and coming off or um, mute. Can every I think everyone can hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna hop back aside. Um, okay. Um, so now you've uh, we've talked about your brand strategy very quickly and your corporate identity. Um, now you might be ready to develop a core brand message and write a brand story. So um, again, we, we've really just um, whizzing, kind of whizzing through um, the overarching kind of uh, elements that you need to think about um, when communicating your brand. So um, I'm going to talk about brand story. Um, so you know a lot of businesses make the mistake of not clearly articulating um what it is what they do um so clarifying your your brand what we call brand story helps customers understand um the benefits of using your products your services or even your ideas so we use um a framework that uses seven elements of great storytelling and these seven elements are um you know points that humans will respond to so I'll talk through those in just a moment. Um, <clears throat> so really the key points here are developing a message, message so that your customers listen and plays to their emotional needs. Um, so I'm just flicking on a, side, a slide. Um, it's using storytelling to grow your business and using those key sort of points that I've mentioned that humans actually do respond to. Um, and it's and it helps to simplify your brand message so that people can understand it. Um, it's memorable, um, repeatable, um, and easy to sort of um, 
easy to quick and easy to tell people exactly what you do and they have that aha moment of immediately knowing um, what your brand does and what you do and how you help them um, so I'm going to talk through um, the, the brand the story framework the seven steps that we use to develop your um, message and clarify your message so number one um, every story has a hero right um, so in this in in this framework that we use the hero of the, of the story is the customer not you not the brand um, I think generally businesses are starting to realize this but there was a time up until quite recently where brands just love to talk about themselves which is great people want to hear a backstory and they want to know how you've how you've come about as a business but essentially customers want to know what what you can do for them they don't want to hear about you they want to know how you're going to help them so the hero of our story is the customer and then um, the customer has a problem right now they're looking for a solution so um, they buy their they, they buy because they have an internal problem so what problem are you solving solving for them emotionally and practically and then thirdly um, every hero in their story they need a guide um, to help them to get to their happy ending um, that guide is you the brand um, so they're not looking for another hero they're looking for a guide they're looking for someone with authority to help them find the solution and get and have a happy ending and then the four they need a plan how are they going to get to this happy ending that we keep talking about how are they going to get there um, the guide needs to be you know qualified and authoritative and um, help them get to where they need to be so you as a brand need to tell your customers how they're going to get their success and then five um, you as a brand call, call them to action customers don't take action unless they're challenged to do so so example of this might be on your website um, within that eye line on the website you need a call to action they need to know a customer needs to know okay they like your brand they like what you're offering they, they realize that you're possibly going to solve their problem now how how am I going to do how am I going to get in contact with my guide with the brand to help me and then number six um, you need to need to sort of play almost to what failure might look like if they don't use you and don't use your brand and this might sit quite uncomfortably with some people um, but ultimately this is what um, you know customers don't want to fail this is again and playing playing to their internal emotional needs they don't want that they don't want to fail um, and you can help them avoid, avoid that failure um, and that might be you know buying from you rather than from a competitor and then number seven of course our story ends in it in success the customers happy um, so how will your brand change their life for them for the better and what will that look like you need to tell them in your story um, so that when they come to you you've solved their problem you've guided them along the way they need to know what that what that's going to look like for them in the end what's going to make their life better and then finally um, don't forget to use your tone of voice which again goes back to your your brand cross and your personality so looking at how you talk to your customers um, is going to also be very very important um, when you're when you're telling your your brand story um, so I'm conscious I really whizzed through that um, there is a lot more <laughs> to developing a brand story and we just wanted to sort of run through the framework with you today um, and of course you know if anybody's interested to find out more about how how we how we write brand stories and obviously you can you can contact us separately and we can we can help you with that um, Okay, so the next slide is um, talking about some ca uh, case study um, where we've written uh, their brand story. So we take the hero and the hero here, we're going back to our, um, our kitchen supplier again here. So the hero of our story is um, a mid-income family living in um, the Chalfonts and Chiltern District in Buckinghamshire and they're looking for a well-made kitchen.
The problem that the customer has is that they're maybe too embarrassed to visit the local showroom in case their budget won't stretch to that well-made bespoke kitchen that they really, really want. So the plan for the brand is to encourage them to stop by the showroom for a no obligation um, conversation. And the failure, um, well, they're worried that they might waste their budget on a lower quality, badly planned off the shelf kitchen. And the success is a well-made practical kitchen within budget and the feel good factor of buying local. So uh, our one liner that we came up with um, after writing the brand story was chalk kitchens, a world of ideas just around the corner. So here we're playing to um, the locality that they're just around the corner and a world of ideas in that they're um, fully qualified, creative um, and, and supply really well made uh, kitchens. Uh, we also developed a sentence that can also be used across their um, communications. Uh, which is we build custom made kitchens to suit your budget, practical, local, down to earth service with great British design. Your dream kitchen is just around the corner. So um, as easy as it sounds to sort of say that sentence out loud now, um, some people really do miss the point um, when they're talking about their own brand um, and talk about themselves too much, quite frankly. So the, these stories and, and sentences are very customer centric and, and immediately tell a customer how you're helping them solve their problem and end up with a really happy ending. Um, so that's, that's brand story in a very, very quick nutshell <laughs> overarching. Um, the next slide, we just wanted to talk about um, something a bit more relevant to the current crisis and, and COVID-19. So we've got a couple of case studies here, um, which I'll hand over to Lisa to in a second, um, about some brands that we really, um, really have, have loved what they've done and how, and how they've responded um, in the crisis, including something that we've done as well. So I'm just gonna hand that over to Lisa now. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, just three different responses from three different brands that we thought were quite interesting um, and might give you some inspiration on what your brand could do um, at the moment um, in terms of marketing or messaging. And obviously, it really depends on what your, your identity is and what your strategy is, how you might best do that. But these are three uh, different responses. Um, the first one is by the United Nations. Um, this one is all about communication and collaboration, creating um, uh, a platform for designers and creators around the world to uh, post their response to this particular crisis within the framework of the United Nations uh, remit. So this was a really easy way for the United Nations to bring attention to their own brand and their own values by asking other people to contribute within that framework. So they had over 16,000 entries from uh, creators all over the world making posters, videos, uh, conceptual um, interactive pieces, movies, uh, pieces of music. So a really nice wide ranging thing that actually didn't cost the United Nations much to do, but just created this fantastic platform um, within their brand framework. So uh, it's a really nice way to um, respond and obviously fits in with their values. Um, the second example is uh, from Borough Market in London, who contacted us a couple of weeks ago and gave us literally two days to come up with a corporate identity for an initiative that they wanted to set up uh, whereby they would provide fresh fruit and vegetables to the local uh, NHS key workers at St Thomas and St Guy's Hospital. Again, local, hospi uh, local hospitals to the borough market. So um, for their brand, um, their values are about being a local community market. They are very touristy, but at the moment they really wanted to push this idea of being a local market now that everyone's at home. 
So um, they set up this initiative to, to support that side of their brand and that side of their values and obviously do some good at the same time. So a really nice way to create a, a short term campaign that fits with the borough markets um, and also produces a, a sort of separate brand with its own, with its own mini, mini strategy. Um, and that's been really well received and obviously that all feeds back into the main brand. And then the third one we liked um, is just a really smart piece of advertising. Obviously, uh, this uh, brand, Emily Crisps, had pre-planned some billboard uh, direct marketing and advertising in London. And obviously, it went live just as the uh, COVID situation put us all into lockdown. And they did this really fun uh, campaign based around the fact that uh, they've wasted all this money on advertising and no one's actually going to see any of it apart from a runner and a pigeon. So we thought this was a really cute uh, way to respond. It's empathetic. It's building a relationship with people who'll see the poster. It's funny. Um, and it's just a nice response. So with these three different um, approaches, it's a nice way for you to think how, how might your brand respond you know would your brand respond um, in a funny way in an empathetic way would it run a campaign would it um, produce something collaborative like what exactly would your brand do um, to stand out at the moment um, over and above just sending an email out to your customers you know what can you do uh, that provides interest and support to your customers at a time like this so these are three very different directions uh, for you to maybe think about how that how that might work for you. Oops, sorry, um, and that that is um, that's that's uh, where we got to with that slide. So I'll hand you back to Laura. Thanks, Lisa. Um, so yeah, we've sort of come to the end of our presentation now. Um, uh, we have some slides on about who we are, but we won't, <laughs> won't go through that now. But um, very, very quickly, um, as Philip has said, you know, we are we are an independent um, agency. We work with um, with independent, small and medium sized businesses um, to, to, to develop marketable brands. Um, so hopefully today's given you a flavour of, of, of how you can help yourself really during this time. Um, and yeah, that's it. So I think it's over to somebody to perhaps collate and ask any questions. Great. Well, thank you, Lisa and Laura. That was really interesting. I think you did cover an awful lot in a very short time in a very clear and simple way. I, I really like the brand cross and the seven steps of the brand story as really nice, simple tools, I think that, that could really help people. Um, uh, and I think you said we can share those slides um, afterwards with, with everyone who's, who's joined us today, which is great. Um, so we have time for uh, just a few questions now. Um, do just uh, un unmute and ask a question, or if you'd rather me raise it for you, just pop something in the, in the chat box. Hi, I've got a question. Can everyone hear me? Yes, thank um, you. Go ahead, Marie. Great. Um, I just want to ask Lisa and Laura how you would go about building a brand strategy and a brand story within a brand. And I ask this because um, so I kind of represent um, venue hire at the Ashmolean Museum, and the Ashmolean is kind of known as um, you know a, an amazing cultural attraction that's that's free it's a museum with lots of amazing objects and stories um, but within that what we offer is kind of exclusive events some weddings and and very sort of um, uh, lovely occasions and as, as you can imagine that's quite a different audience um, and quite a different product so I just wondered how I would go about kind of building that strategy and that story knowing that there's like an umbrella like a bigger brand above me that, that would kind of have some impact yeah um it comes down to starting off by creating a brand architecture that makes sense as you discussed so working out um 
the customers that you're looking at. Again, if you focus very much on the customer, go back to the source. So who is that person who's going to book it? And then work out why they might book your particular venue and then see whether that corresponds to the, the master brand as well, you know, whether they would pick you because of the Ashmolean. And if they do, then feed those values into the sub brand. So it's, it's borrowing what is important from the master brand and then using that within the new structure and story. Um, and obviously not contradicting anything that the main brand is doing. It needs to work in synergy. So it's really just a question of, you know, how different you want to look um, or how closely you want to be associated to. It's always helpful for a new brand to borrow brand equity from the larger master brand to start with because it's easier for you to market. Uh, if you start completely from scratch with completely different set of values, then um, it will be a, a harder, more expensive job. Um, However, when you do the story, that can be much more bespoke. So I would, I would probably suggest that your strategy would be not far off the Ashmolean in terms of values, um, yeah. but your personality will be different and then your brand story will be completely unique to what you're doing. And very much, again, as we talk about the hero being the customer, very much focused on that particular person. So that can actually be quite different. So, um, this is music to my ears because this is what I've been doing. So I was just like clarifying that I had like gone about it the right way to make sure. Because yeah. like the, the last thing you want is for the two brands to end up sort of competing when really exactly. one of them is much stronger anyway and really should be sort of riding on the on the back of that one. Yeah, it's like a branch of a tree. So, you know, if you've got your main brand is the, is the branch of the tree, you've got little... Um, twigs coming off you know and they can become more important and eventually you know can become self-sufficient over time but to start with you know they will feed off that that main um, set of um, brand values and the strategy of the of the master brand so it should be quite I think it should be quite organic really if, if there's any link I would say great thank thank you Lisa uh, I could have been a case study there. I got married at the Ashmolean and they did a fantastic job. It was a little while ago, but uh, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Um, right, we've probably got time for one more quick question before we just wrap up with a few slides. Anyone else want to ask anything? Uh, there's one question come through just very quickly, uh, um, ladies, if you wouldn't mind. Um, you say now during the, the during the sort of quieter time for a lot of businesses is a good time to look at uh, rebranding and, and looking at everything again but is it a good time to actually do that rebranding now what are your thoughts on that um i would go softly softly and use this time for thinking and planning and strategy work um, and then as we reopen, that's when I'd start to see if that's a good time to actually start physically changing anything. Um, we don't know how it's going to feel like when we all go back to business and, and how things will change. Again, it would depend on the market, but I would use now as a, as a moment to plan and, and not do anything drastic for sure. So um, I think there's no, there's no reason to not spend this moment to get your ducks in a line and in a row. But yes, if you went to market with a completely new look uh, in, in a month or two, that could raise questions. So as with any kind of rebrand, you just need to time it very well. Make sure that you've got the right budget um, for your marketing campaign to relaunch uh, and make sure that your audience are actually there. And I think that's probably key at the moment is we're not sure where our audience is and our customers are going to be and whether they're going to be receptive. So that's such a big unknown. I think at the moment you, you need to just be be very careful with how you would plan that. But it's certainly it's certainly feasible, and I would certainly recommend using now as a time to to get that strategy work done for sure. Great, thank yeah. you. So, so think and plan, but no big changes until everything's a bit more a bit more. Certain. Yeah, and I'd just add in there as well. You know, um, keep an eye on the market, keep an eye on customer behaviours. Um, you know, if you've got this this kind of space headspace to kind of just keep an eye on, on what's going on and how people are communicating and how your audience is changing um 
that is all going to help, you know, for when things sort of start to return to normal. So it sort of sets you in a, in a really great position. That was great. all I said. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, okay. So just to wrap up now. I uh, just wanted to mention um, the events, uh, some of the events that we've got coming up in this series from Oxfordshire Green Tech. It's a busy week this week. We've got uh, a presentation tomorrow about improving your organization's environmental sustainability. And that can fit, uh, can, you know, very likely to be far more important in your brand after COVID than possibly it was before. I think we've all appreciated the improvements in our environment uh, during this time so uh, that, that was something that Laura and Lisa were mentioning. Uh, also this week an introduction to Bioregional's One Planet Living Framework which uh, it can be really useful if you're looking at sustainable um, housing developments and sustainable communities. Uh, next week we've got a roundup of the latest uh, clean tech news in Oxfordshire. Uh, 12th of May, we're looking again at support for businesses to help them be more robust, or in this case, this term anti-fragile, um, so that when um, really challenging times like these hit us, um, organisations are in much better condition to uh, deal with them. Uh, and then towards the end of May, we're looking at uh, how mentoring and coaching and other support services can help uh, green and clean uh, companies during the current time. So just want to say thank you again to uh, B4 for hosting with us today and to Laura and Lisa for that really insightful and, and clear straightforward um, presentation and, and really getting us thinking about what, what we should be thinking about our brand strategy at the moment. So uh, here are the contact details, we'll send around the slides. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much for attending today. Um, look forward to seeing you at future events and please do stay safe. Thanks. Bye bye. <laughs>